morning and welcome to day three of our Baja adventures. This morning we drove quickly, 30 minute drive from Ensenada. If you haven't seen the first two episodes from the series from Ensenada, from Puerto Nuevo, go watch those as well. And we are now in Valle de Guadalupe, the wine region here in Mexico. There are a bunch of wine vineyards all around, dirt roads. It is rugged and remote. A full day of wine tasting and adventure starts now with breakfast right here. Let's go. Tucked away into the rugged farmland of the Guadalupe Valley, there's an institution that almost every single person who gave me recommendations about this area told me I needed to visit. La Cocina de Doña Estela, recently awarded the best breakfast in the world. And the woman behind the name, Doña Estela, is in the kitchen, controlling the narrative of what makes this place so special. Vats and cauldrons of bubbling flavors fill the room with incredible aromas. But the real labor of love begins with the featured dish, borrego tatemado, shredded wood-roasted lamb, buried underground for six hours to cook, finished on the flat top to get crispy, and served a variety of ways. No. <laughs> we just sat down, we couldn't help it. Doña Estela is in the back making up this entire feast and the first thing we had to take a bite of early was the gordita. This is the gordita de borrego. We have borrego taco and we have the traditional borrego tatemado. And it comes of course with the consomme. Now, Make sure I have this correct. So borrego, in this case, is a domesticated sheep yeah. and a bighorn sheep, a wild sheep, yeah. had a baby, yeah. and that becomes borrego. And is there a reason why she chose borrego? Because of the flavor. And also we have uh, corn pancakes as well, but the star here is borrego. I don't think I've been this excited on the trip so far. One side note, that kitchen was immaculate. It was so clean, everything was in incredibly organized. That makes me feel good when you go back in the kitchen to film and everything is so organized and clean and no. she is just... And Dona Estela is the real uh, boss, like uh, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 giving orders, getting everything done. As she well. everything. She's just quarterbacking from that yeah. kitchen and it's amazing to watch. They have everything set up, but enough talking. Let's get into this. We got fresh cheese, cilantro, onions. Moment of truth. Everything makes wonderful. <laughs> no. This is one of the best things I've ever had. That flavor is so rich. So rich. And I want to say rugged. I feel like I'm outdoors. I feel like I'm by a campfire. I feel like I'm running in the wild with my shirt off. I just feel like a man right now. And they serve it with these, look at these ribs, just falling off the bone. And one of the best things of all of this, the borrego is amazing, but pan to my left, look what's right to my left. Fresh tortillas being made right next to my table. We have borrego being buried outside. We have it cooked inside right behind me. This place is incredible. It feels like you're on a rustic farm right in the middle of the wine country. We'll give one bite of the taco too. Look at this. This one's a little crispier shell. We'll dive right in there. I'm not going anything. Just going straight borrego. This makes me want to rip my shirt off. <laughs> That's how I feel. The first time I, uh, the, the first time when I uh, take these ones, uh, I remember my feeling like I need to share it with someone. Uh, like, uh, like, uh, even when I was with my friends, I was like, yeah. let's call some more friends. Like, uh, like I just want to smoke a cigar, drink whiskey, and eat burrito. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> oh. All right, and now the pancake. Let's give it a try. 
you come for the borrego, no problem, no questions asked, that's the start. But the beautiful sidekick is these corn pancakes. Truthfully, and you think, okay, how good can pancakes be? We were both saying, okay, we'll just have a bite of pancakes, it's fine, it's normal. They were joking at me uh, since the beginning, like, ah, yeah, Tadeo again is going to ask pancakes. No, 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 this is a good deal. There's a reason for that, and honestly, they are incredible. The texture, the crunchiness, as Tadeo said, they really don't need anything. They are a perfect balance to the savory of the borrego, the sweetness of these corn pancakes. Get both of them, trust us. It'll, it'll be worth your while. It's unbelievable. And there she is, the queen. La jefa. La reina. La reina de Borrego. La mera mera. La mera mera. She's on your <laughs> Brandon already meet God. <laughs> Thoughts, feelings. The I'm in love. The camera. I'm in love. I think I met the, the woman of my dreams today. <laughs> All right, after one of the greatest culinary experiences of my life, now we are diving into the meat of this region, and that is the wine. And our first stop? Barón Balché. Barón Balché. It's 11 o'clock, so it's, yeah. it's a respectable hour to start our wine tour, right? Yeah, for sure. Let's go drink some wine. Aquí va a probar cuatro vinos tintos, pero aquí hacen como comparación de las líneas. Right now we're 24 feet below ground uh -huh. and all the walls are 100% natural. And we use barrels that are 500 liters and barrels that are 225 liters. For the oak, we use American oak and French oak and we also use blended oak. The oaks helps us give well, the wine more flavors and smells. These bottles over here have been aging since 2006, 7 or 8. So they have like 15 to 18 years aging. They cost about $500 per bottle. They're all are from our premium line. And well, the dust you see on the, well, on the bottles, yeah. it's actually to protect it from the artificial lights. It's a oh, little okay. shield. Mm -hmm. we, leave it, we leave the dust there intentionally. Like, like when elephants dump mud on their skin. Uh-huh, to protect their to protect skin. from the sun. Yeah, exactly the same. Exactly the same. Oh, got lost mm -hmm. in the cave there for a second. This is cool. All right, we have the Sauvignon Blanc 2017. Two years in barrels, two years in bottles. Uh -huh. The name is Spiral. Spiral. And they recommend it with uh, seafood. So uh, if you hit uh, Ensenada, then hit this one. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> we start with white first because it goes from light to strong. So that's why it's like. Whoa. That, I like this. This one is very smooth, very refreshing. This tastes like summer to me. Yeah. I definitely have a lot of notes of pear. Pear, pear pineapple. Pineapple. Yeah, pineapple. The pineapple is in the living in the aftertaste. Yeah, this one's. Dangerously light. <laughs> like you could, yeah, it's an you could get carried away with yes, this one. Exactly. This one you guys are going to be tasting is our mezcla de tintos. This one is a blender of four different grapes Malbec, Cabernet Franc, Carillane, and Grenache from our young line. One year in French oak, one year in bottle. I'm going to say something wine, very, a lot of tannins in this one. This one has a lot of tannins. Yeah, you already know your, you already know your wine. Yeah, I can feel it. It's like drying out my mouth. Very dry. I'm tasting some dirt and some cranberries. Have you tasted Jamaica? Hama yes, you can definitely taste the hibiscus, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. We have here our special reserve. The special reserve is one of the first bottles they made here in Baron Bache. This one is a blender of three different grapes, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, and Syrah. Okay. This one passes 24 months in brand new um, French oak and 24 months in bottle. This wine actually has two gold medals of the best wine from Mexico. From Mexico. And as you can see, of the legs mm. are more slower uh, than the, the younger ones. Nice legs. Did uh -huh, you say nice that? legs. Uh -huh. <laughs> nice, yeah, that's exactly how you say nice legs. Look at those. That's the way you can see how many years it has been in bottle, in in barrel, and what kind of like line of wine. Oh, yeah. Slower the legs, the older. Oh, that makes sense. For everyone. Uh -huh. Yeah. First wine is our Balche Siete from our premium line. This uh -huh. one is 100% Sinfandel. It's from the harvest of 2009. This one passed 40 months in brand new American oak and eight years in bottle. So it's a very man. Very long mm -hmm. This beauty is gonna have some legs. Am I uh, right? Yeah, very <laughs> slow, long legs. 
And also the Sinfandel is one of our grapes that has already 83 years here. So you guys are going to get a lot of like minerals. A lot 83. Of 83 years. La planta. The vine. No has way. Alright, so this and is the reserve. This is the big dog. The big dog. Mm -hmm, exactly. Look at the color too. It's like brown. It's yeah. not even not even purple uh -huh, anymore. The brownish is thanks to the to the barrel. That's, to the barrel. Uh -huh, that's how you can see. That's As you can see, the legs very very slow. This smells amazing. It, it does. It feels like a it smells like a warm hug. Yeah, yeah, it, right. I feel already comfortable. Like, uh, a, like uh, I, I can tell that this one my secrets. <laughs> uh, and he's going to take it uh, to the dead. And he'll keep it, yeah. yeah. It, it was yeah. worth the wait. Vale la pena. Vale la pena, exactly. Cheers. I'll drink to that. Thank you, man. That's my favorite. Without a doubt. Alright, stop number two. Where are we at? We are at uh, the Cantos. We already passed uh, Baron Balche uh, and we have a wonderful view of the whole Valley of Guadalupe. And we are going to drink a little bit more wine, just a little. Now this spot is more of a, a modern winery, correct? Yeah, yeah, a modern winery. Okay. Oh, look at this entrance. <laughs> This place is gorgeous. It looks brand new. There's a bunch of people here, a ton of beautiful people. And now we're just part of the society. Part of beautiful people. Part of beautiful people. And this one feels much more modern than our first stop. This one is very modern, very hip, much more industrial. It feels like an art installation itself. There's modern art right in the lawn out here, a beautiful patio and grass area. You can sit out on the terraza here and look out at this incredible landscape hills and mountains in the distance, wineries and vineyards right in the foreground. The only thing to do now is try the wine. All right, our first one here, we have the rosé. This is the pink wine, and this is the most popular wine on the menu because it's fresh, it's refreshing. People come here in the summertime, obviously, that's when we're here. So because of COVID, they have an interesting setup. So if you wanna do a, a tasting, you gotta go up to the bar, she'll pour you it, explain it to you a little bit, and then you come back to your table, and that's where you try it. Safe distance. Safe distance, so that's what we're gonna do. Rosé. Rosé. Salud. That definitely is refreshing. I I do taste a good amount of vinegar yeah. and peaches, and it is fruitier, but I, a hard vinegar on there. For me, the peach flavor is more present, like in the yeah. aftertaste, I, I really like that. Honestly, the more I drink this one, the rosé, I, I like it more. At first, it punches me with a little vinegar taste, and uh -huh. I didn't really love that. Uh -huh. But now it's kind of smoothing out a little bit. And this, my friends, is the Pinot Noir. So this is our first of two reds. Whoa. Mm. You go from the whites to this and it, that is dry and that is delicious. A little smoky. I, I, I can say like, I can see a movie with these ones. Maybe grab uh, a little bit of nice cheese. It's a, it's a, it's a this, one. this with cheese. Yeah. This is the cheese wine because it's very dry. I think a little cheese, maybe some apricots, yeah. a little charcuterie board maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe. This is a good one for that. And one quick little note here, they only use one grape per wine. So one grape per bottle, one grape per type of wine. So a lot of places, you know, they'll blend the wines like at our last spot, but this spot, one grape per wine. And this is our <laughs> Man. And this is it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, walk our face. All right, this is our fourth tasting here, and this is the Ruby Sauvignon. And this one is from 2018, so it's about Three years old. Mm -hmm. More intense color than the than the previous one. A uh, lot more. This one is more deeper. Yeah. Uh, this to me wins. We saved the best for last. Yeah, the, the best for last. And there's some sort of lightness. It's almost like you bit down on a grape and it exploded in your mouth. Oh yeah. man, I like this more and more. I can believe I would love this one. Man, this is like a date wine. Yeah. This is a wine you. You want to bring a girl over, It's let's say it's the third date, you bring her back to your house, you cook for her, maybe you cook a lamb shank, maybe you cook a short rib, you have it all in the pot and you cook it up, you bring it out, you let it sit for a little bit, this is the wine that you bring out, you put it in a decanter, 
and you really let her let her just know that you're about a classy lifestyle and just you'll win her over I think with this one yeah or are a wonderful one also for a gift uh, like for the father of that girl <laughs> <laughs> and you can and you can get along with the whole family you know It's incredible. We are now at Fauna, and Fauna is within the Bruma complex. It's a winery, but a beautiful little restaurant tucked in between the vineyards and the olive trees. And the mountains. And the mountains, these rock formations that make you think you're in Joshua Tree. It's desert, it's wine region. We are going to taste uh, Mexican experimental auto cuisine. I don't know what does it mean, but it's a lot of a lot of words, uh, <laughs> and, and, I, and I really hope it's going to be tasty. If it if it tastes anything in the way this place is set up and looks, we're in for a treat. Mm. Wow! Look at this thatched roof. I feel like I'm in the Garden of Eden right now. Flowers, herbs in the garden. Man, there's a there's a feeling to this place. Everything is wood. It feels so natural. You can feel the ground in your in, in your shoes. I, I am really hyped now. <laughs> Very excited. Very excited for this. So what we did is we got this set prepared menu. It's called Festin Fauna, and that is a, fe a fauna fauna feast, is what we'll call it. And so it's a four course meal, and on top of the four courses, there's also a dessert and a salad, right? Yeah. You you can ask it with the drinks or without the drinks. So you can get a drink pairing with every course, which could get dangerous for those that were already mm -hmm. on wine tours today and were trying to make it somewhere for sunset that also serves drinks. So we're trying to pace ourselves, so we got one fancy drink, and the rest is just food. Nice. <laughs> Salud. Cheers, my friend. All right, I'm gonna have to switch this over to play-by-play -play announcing, because, well, things escalate quickly. The first course is dedicated to seafood. Yellowtail ceviche with Oaxacan chili mayo and cucumber mustard seeds. Pacific oysters with green tomatoes. Abalone with agua chili of pumpkin seeds. And sea urchin with a cactus dashi. Now, I don't always love sea urchin because it's pretty fishy, but that one, the avocado and the greens really cut into it. That's very nice. Round two, it's octopus with pumpkin seeds, grilled potatoes and local olives, and smoked broccoli with broccoli puree, chili oil, black sesame seeds, and lemon zest. That is a refreshing treat. I don't know if we'd really appreciate it if we were just coming here after eating a regular diet, but we've been eating a lot of meat and this broccoli is out of this world. This puree, I could just eat this puree. Just yeah, straight. it's wonderful. On to the third course now, and each one continues to trump the last. Grilled lettuce with fennel, chili, and green tomato salsa. Scallops with eggplant puree and squid ink, served with flour tortillas. Crispy pork with cauliflower puree, fermented cauliflower, and verdolaga greens, served with blue corn tortillas. And not to be missed, one perfect tetela. A blue corn tortilla stuffed with cheese and covered in roasted tomato salsa. <laughs> Guys, fauna, no joke. And now the masterpiece. Course number four, the entrees. Charred cabbage with grilled cabbage puree, chili oil, and sour cream. Crusted Wagyu steak served with a bean and cheese stuffed pepper. Roasted cauliflower with a mole pipian and shredded goat cheese. And a perfectly cooked striped bass with an adobo of chile pasilla mije. With all respect about anything else who was in, in top tier league, this cauliflower with the pipian mole won my heart. And to cleanse our palates before dessert, grilled pineapple with a tepache or fermented pineapple ice cream with olive honey, oil. lemon, and olive oil. It's like an Italian ice, like pineapple Italian ice with a little bit of the savoriness from the olive oil, adds a little fattiness to it that's just out of this world. It tastes like a tropical vacation. It's just a palate cleanser, this is pre-postre, so this is before dessert, and it tastes like a conga line. And last, but certainly not least, we make it to dessert. Bougainvillea flour sorbet over a lime ice cream and almond crumble. A semifredo with blue corn flakes, salty caramel, and a homemade ice cream. And finally, the chocolate bomb with a chocolate crumble, chocolate mousse, and a peanut butter ice cream. That's it. 
<laughs> fauna, unbelievable. Look at that. How beautiful is that? The sun is setting behind us. Fauna, unreal. But right now, we got to run. We're out of here. We got to go chase the sunset. We made it. We made it. This is Casa Frida. This is our Airbnb for the evening. Let's go inside and check this out. Wow. Look at this place. What? This is like a gallery. Well, the code opens so that we're in the right place. Frida Kahlo. There she is. So for those of you who don't know, Frida, as she's so lovingly referred to as, is a Mexican icon. In, in the paper money of Mexico, she was even the face of Frida in one side and the face of his husband in the other side. She was always uh, painting portraits and she was uh, having a tormentous uh, life. But she's most famous for, well, amongst other things, one of the big things she's famous for is the, shall we say, the founder of the selfie. Yeah, uh, uh, she reinvented the selfie with her with her portraits. All right, let's take a tour. All right, so you got the main area. Hey, ¿Quién es el Diego? Yeah, that's Diego. He was one of the three masters of the muralism in Mexico. If the you murals. Were, murals, big murals. Let's keep moving. Oh, look at these. They're wine bottles in the door. That's awesome. Let's see what we got in here. Looks like the patio. It's pretty good. <laughs> this is all for us. This is all for us. <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. Here. Mm -hmm. All right, we got the stage here. We have a vineyard right here, the bar, the restaurant, and the mountains in the background. All right, we're back inside, and we go through here. We go through here, and let's see the rooms. Oh, awesome. This is room number one. Not it using this room. Guys, we have a mirror on the ceiling. <laughs> room, oh, you're absolutely right. Cause look, here's another one. More Frida pictures as pillows. And this is an interesting room as well. And there's Frida herself with her parrots. Is this place haunted? Um, there is the beautiful bathroom. There's me, a beautiful kitchen. Oh, more Frida. And here is the dining table. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is a wrap here in Valle. We're gonna call it a night. It's like we're sleeping in a museum tonight. It is beautiful, an art gallery. If you guys liked the video, again, please, as always, give that a big thumbs up. It helps a ton. Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already and stay tuned for next week's video as we will be heading to Tecate. Tecate, Baja California. Are you ready for that? Yeah, for sure. I'm you think ready. we're going to drink some Tecates? We are going to drink a Tecate on Tecate. <laughs> this is going to be nuts. All right, you guys, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching this long. Maybe here's a couple of bloopers. Who knows? In the meantime, travel deeper. See you guys next week. We tried. This is the reality of travel sometimes. We made it to Cuatro Cuatros a las... 7.10. 7.10 and the last shuttle goes up at 6.30. We were having too good of a time at Fauna. And this is what it looks like. The entrance. So there's a shuttle that takes you up to the actual lookout spot where you have sunset and it closes at 6.30 was the last run up. So everything is closed from then. Luckily, it wasn't a very good sunset. Yeah. Right, buddy? Right? With breakfast right here. Let's go. That was great. You guys are all safe here. The pigs, the cows, we only eat borrego. The sheep, you, you guys are in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, uh... This is for the third date, and this is for a gift for the father of the girl on the third date at your place. Yeah. <laughs> Man, put that in the description of this one. <laughs> Bro. Bro. <laughs> you literally talked for like two and a half minutes about this date. <laughs> you were going on. I don't know why. That was so, so disgusting. You got, you I was got, fantasizing with this date got, was in my own head. You gotta now. paint the picture for the people. You gotta put people in the place. Oh, you know, dude. they can't be here to, to try the wine, so they gotta imagine, yeah, where you, am I when I'm having this? If I just say this is a good wine, I taste notes of black pepper. Ah, 
get me in that apartment. <laughs> it's a cold night outside. Yeah. I need a blanket in that apartment. You put, get a blanket? Put, put, put me the blanket. <laughs> what kind of blanket? It's a fleece uh, it, blanket? It's fluffy. Fluffy blanket? <laughs> Paint the picture for the people. Yeah, the That's what we're here to do. That's why we're making yeah. videos. Well, the picture was painted.